This is Great Chefs of France, featuring some of the country's top artisans from Rouen to Lyon, from Paris to Cannes. Welcome to a culinary tour of some of the world's preeminent dining destinations. This time from Paris, Eric Frechon. From Lyon, Jean-Paul Lacombe. And handmade chocolates from Jean-Paul Havan in Paris. The chef de cuisine at the Hotel Bristol in Paris is Eric Frechon. He was born in Corby, France and began his culinary career at the hotel school in Rouen. He worked in several French hotels and a Spanish hotel through the 80s. He came to the Bristol in 1999. His appetizer is potato waffle and smoked salmon. The chef begins with what he calls tangy cream, creme fraiche with lemon juice, salt and pepper. que l'on va assaisonner avec du sel, du poivre et un jus de citron. The cream is set aside and the waffle batter is begun. Small potatoes are julienned on a Japanese mandolin. Some of the tangy cream is added to the potato. Nous y mettons un jaune et un œuf entier. Et ces deux œufs-là, on a whole egg and a yolk. En œuf dur pour faire la mimosa. On assaisonne toujours, sel et poivre. He says once the batter is complete, you have to cook it pretty fast or the potatoes will darken. Eggs show up again in a garnish. Chopped up hard-boiled eggs combined with chopped chives. The batter goes on to a waffle iron. On peut graisser légèrement quand même le gaufrier. Meanwhile, the chef starts to put the plate together. The tangy cream is spread inside a ring mold.
Là, je mets un cercle pour que ce soit bien net. Ensuite, nous allons parsemer de... The chopped egg and chives are added. The waffle and a slice of smoked salmon. Avec une belle tranche de saumon fumé posée en vague dessus. On met environ 10 caviar, a piece of dried leek and chopped chives garnish. Food writer Mark Bittman says Lyon is second to none in its devotion to food. It is the true heart of its nation's cuisine, and its food remains the best in France. One of the practitioners of this lofty art is Jean-Paul Lacombe at Lyon de Lyon. Here is an entree of pike dumplings and Nantua sauce. For this demonstration, we will tap into translator Marc Cosnard de Closet's soundtrack. Bonjour. Ben, écoutez, pour euh, cette deuxième réalisation, n'oublions pas qu'on est dans la région lyonnaise. Here we are in Lyon, very close to La Dombe. So we have fantastic products there. We have freshwater fish like the pike and the carp. Now for the carp, we take the sperm out of the carp. We often tell clients uh, that they are eggs of the carp. But in fact, this is the sperm of the male carp. This sauce is, is made mostly with crayfish. We have all the herbs and the vegetables which we cut up into it. And as I told you, we use the head of the crawfish. This is where all the flavor is and the claws, the flesh that's in the claws. Put a little tomato concentrate. Very tiny bit. If we have fresh tomatoes, we can put less. Now we're going to flambe it with some cognac. It is very impressive. It's pretty. But the point of it is to get rid of the alcohol of the cognac. And here we add some cream. We want to keep the flavor of the cognac, but we don't want to keep the alcohol. And then we let it cook. We cover the mixture with cream. I feel like this is whipping cream. Or light cream. Or light cream. With the classic sauce Nantua, at some point the crawfish parts are crushed. 
This will not be seen in this demonstration. A food processor can be used. After crushing, the sauce is strained. We let it here, we let it cook. And then we're going to blend it. Now we're going to prepare the dumplings. So we took the fillets of the pike, which we blended, and then we strained it, and here's what's left. That's the result. Can we add a little bit of nutmeg? Can we use a wooden spatula? Can we use a spatula to mix this? Can we add some the eggs? Whole eggs. One whole egg and one plus one yolk. The light bulb for us much better. Now we add a little bit of cream. a mix which, according to the freshness of the pike, when you use the cream, sometimes you have to add a little cream if you use the same mix the next day. Okay, about this. Three, souvent en cuisine, elles ne sont pas forcément très, 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 très précises. Et puis, c'est ce qui fait l'originalité du cuisinier. Donc, on peut, on peut changer. So now we finish. Here's the consistency, the texture of the mix. Should be pretty thick. We taste it. Mm. We add a little bit of salt. We taste. Always taste in the kitchen. Always, always taste. A little pepper. Now at the same time, we've started. With, it's some uh, simmering water, which is salted. And we're going to make our dumplings. With this spoon, you shape the dumpling in the spoon, and then we will poach them in this boiling water. Ça, c'est, uh, voyez, c'est ce qui s'appelle tailler entre deux cuillères. This is what is called to cut with a. We use this spoon to make these dumplings. In fact, it is poached, it's not poached in water, it's poached in poultry stock. The dumplings are presented with crawfish tails. The sauce nantua is finished. Now here's some whipped cream. It's whipped cream for two or three people. Just before service, the carp sperm is sautéed in butter. The dumplings and sauce were passed under a salamander just before service. C'est très bon là, les temps. Peu de gens connaissent. C'est régional, mais c'est très très bon. Voilà.
Jean-Paul Avin is a master pastry chef in Paris. If he has a specialty, it's chocolate. He has three shops in Paris, any one of which would make chocoholics woozy. His chocolate creations are almost displayed like signed and numbered art prints. His dessert is an excellent example of the chocolatier's art. For this demonstration, we use Marc Cosnard de Closet's translation. Bonjour, je suis Jean-Paul Evin. Hello, my name is Jean-Paul Evin, chocolate maker in Paris. Today I'm going to make for you a muscadine with coffee, chestnuts and salted butter. First, these are the ingredients. Here we have sugar, which we use to make a caramel, butter, salted butter, que je vais rajouter avec le sucre. which I'll add to the butter, to the sugar. On trouvera la crème fleurette. There's some whipping cream. Le sucre inverti, tremoline. In inverted sugar, called tremoline. Le chocolat au lait et chocolat noir. There's some milk chocolate and dark chocolate mixed. Les marrons confits. Here are our confit chestnuts. Et un petit peu d'alcool, le cognac. And some cognac. Voilà. Alors, avec cette casserole, je vais donc mettre le sucre. First, I put some sugar into a saucepan. Et là, je vais mettre à chauffer ce sucre pour le faire fondre. I am going to heat it ça, to melt it. Caraméliser <coughs> le sucre à sec. And we call this dry caramelization. Now we're going to let this slowly caramelize. Je prends la crème. I take my whipping cream. Et and my inverted, I add inverted sugar to the whipping cream. Then I take the confit chestnuts and add cognac to them. Here you can see the sugar is beginning to caramelize. When, it's, when, it starts, when it starts turning dark, a little smoke rises it, then we know it's ready. You can see the mixing bowls on the other side. So here the smoke is coming up. Yeah, I'm better over here. Just, just when some steam comes up, it's ready. Now we add the butter directly to the caramel mixture. I'm going to heat the cream mixture. This is how we can make a regular soft caramel. Now I'm adding the boiled cream and inverted sugar mixture. Each of these steps in making the ganache takes a while. Particularly important is temperature. Now I pour this mixture back into a mixing bowl so that it will cool a little faster. We use this spatula, ham spatula, which we call a comb. And it helps to take all the sugar off of the wooden spoon. And now I can pour the caramel mixture on top of the chocolate. This is a mix of milk chocolate and bitter chocolate. Toujours Use the spatula again to get the uh, all the caramel out. And now I'm adding the confit, chestnut, and cognac mixture. To do this right, you, don't, you have to be careful that when you add the caramel to the chocolate, the caramel is not too hot. <coughs> you want the chocolate to crystallize. Correctly. 
Well, they're going to have to be smooth. Si on le fait trop chaud, if we do it, if the caramel is too hot when you add it on top of the chocolate, elle va être liquide, mais pas très onctueuse. It will be liquid, but it won't be creamy. The mixture is spread onto a sheet and put in a cool spot to set up. After cooling down, the ganache is piped onto paper, then returned to a cool place for a while. Chocolat. Here's my cooled ganache. Avec un couteau, que je chauffe un petit peu sur la plaque. I heat my knife slightly on the stove top before I cut it just a little to cut the chocolate. And I cut about one inch pieces. The pieces will be rolled in cocoa, then dipped in chocolate. Incidentally, here's a thoughtful gift for a chocoholic who has everything. Here I'm taking that's the dark chocolate. Voilà, donc le cacao sert un petit peu pour éviter que ça colle de trop. So the cocoa powder is put on top to avoid the to prevent it from sticking too much. And now we're going to dip these into the heated melted bitter chocolate. We use a fork for this. We're dipping. And then we dip it into the confection of sugar. And we use the fork to coat. You can use a strainer like this to remove them from the sugar, get rid of some of the excess sugar. The dip ganache can also be coated with cocoa powder.